Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to be solving an equation with two variables for real numbers. We can also talk about complex solutions towards the end. I don't know how that's going to go, but let's talk about the real cases first. So first of all, is this equation at all possible? So this is kind of like an interesting scenario where we have the reciprocal of two numbers the sum of the reciprocals of two numbers being equal to the sum of the numbers themselves. So think about it. If x is equal to 1, then its reciprocal is also going to be 1. So the sum of 1 and 1 is going to be the same as 1 and 1. So 1 comma 1 satisfies this equation. Yay, great, we got at least one solution. So the solution set is not an empty set. But we want to find more general solutions. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look at some numerical examples anyways, just for fun, but besides something uh, 1 comma 1, because that's too trivial, right? And we're going to talk about some restrictions here. We're going to do a general solution, and at the end, we're going to take a look at the graph. I also want to raise a question of complex solutions. So let's get started. First of all, my question was, is this at all possible? And the answer is yes, because 1 comma 1 definitely satisfies. But if you think about other numbers, other integers, do you think there are any integers that satisfy this? Think about it. There might be, I don't know. I'm not going to answer that question right now. I, should, I want you to think about it. But if you think about like positive integers, uh, well, 2 and 4, their sum is 6, their reciprocals are going to be fractions, so that's not going to work nicely. Right, looks like it. But anyways, let's not replace x and y with two, um, two values. Let's just replace maybe, um, I don't know, y with something. How about y equals 2? If you do that, you're going to get the following. 1 over x plus 1 half equals x plus 2. And then if you multiply everything by 2x, I think that's going to clear all the fractions. Multiply by 2x on both sides like this and like that you're going to get 2 plus x because 2 is going to cancel out and x is going to cancel out equals 2x squared plus 4x and if we put everything on the same side 2x squared plus 4x minus x plus 3x minus 2 equals 0. One other thing that you should always know is if the coefficients of a and c are opposite sign like plus minus minus plus there's always real solutions because the discriminant is going to be positive. Remember the discriminant is b squared minus 4ac this guarantees b squared minus 4ac is greater than 0. Okay, so we're, we're going to find real solutions. Great. Let's see. If, let's solve it. x equals negative b plus minus the square root of b squared 9 plus 4ac. That's going to be 16. Uh-oh. Looks like we're getting a nice uh, discriminant here. The square root of 6, uh, 6, 9 plus 16 is 25. That's going to give me a 5, so it's going to be negative 3 plus minus 5 over 4. Now, negative 3 plus 5 is 2 over 4, which is 1 half. That's one of the solutions. And the other one is going to be negative 2. Hmm. That's interesting, right? So uh, why am I doing this with numerical values? Because I want to give you some ideas, right, to work off of. So y equals 2 gave me two x values. One of them is 1 half. The other one is negative 2. Now, take a look at this expression one more time. Is, is that a surprise that you're getting two reciprocals as solutions, like 2 and 1 half? It shouldn't be, because if x is 2, then 1 over x is going to be 1 half. So these two values are basically going to match up, right? And the same thing goes for y. Make sense? Hopefully it does. <laughs> okay, what about the negative values? We're going to find out later. Let's go ahead and dive into the solution. But first of all, I want to tell you that there are some restrictions. And what are those restrictions? The restrictions are x can't be 0 and y cannot be 0. Other than that, I, I don't see any other problem. So let's go ahead and make a common denominator. That's what we usually do with these kinds of equations. And we get x plus y using the alphabetical order over xy equals x plus y. Now, a lot of people tend to oversimplify things. They just like to cancel out stuff because it's gonna, they think it's going to help them. But sometimes it can hurt the solution. Like if you cross these out and leave with one, yes, that kind of gives you a solution, but only part of the solution. So don't cancel out variables. You can cancel out numbers. You can divide both sides by two, multiply by three over one million. I don't know why you would do that, but you could. 
but don't cancel out variables. So here's instead uh, what you should do. After getting this, I'm going to go ahead and subtract this from the right hand side. So we're going to get x plus y minus x plus y over xy equals 0. Great. So put everything on the same side, set it equal to 0. Why did I subtract this way? Because I don't want to subtract two things. I'm lazy. Okay. Sorry about that. So now we can make a common denominator x plus y multiplied by xy minus x plus y divided by xy. And that is equal to x plus y xy. Or you can actually distribute if you want. And I'll tell you what to do next, but not right now. But if you go ahead and distribute, you get x squared y plus xy squared minus x minus y over xy. And this is equal to 0. So the top should be 0. Great. So this gives us x squared y plus xy squared minus x minus y equals 0. So this kind of seems to be helpful, but guess what? Don't distribute like that, because if you don't, then you're going to be in better shape. Now take a look at this. That should be 0, right? Obviously. So let's go ahead and rewrite it. x plus y multiplied by xy minus the quantity x plus y equals 0. Now take a good look at this. I can put a 1 here, right, because 1 is kind of like an identity element. So now x plus y is a common factor. Take it out, and then you end up with xy minus 1 equals 0. Awesome. Even though we have two variables, we have two factors, and the product is 0, so we can use zero product property, which tells us that each of these factors can be set equal to 0. Let's see what that gives us. And then we're going to compare it to our numerical solution. So this first one gives us x plus y equals 0. And if you solve for y in terms of x, you get y equals negative x. Guess what that's going to be? That's going to be a line, right? What about the second one? Even though I put an arrow there, let's go ahead and move the arrow here. All right. So that one is going to give us x, y minus 1 equals 0. And from here, x, y equals 1. And from that, I can basically write this as y equals 1 over x. And well, what is that? That is a hyperbola. Hmm, that's interesting, right? The graph is actually fairly interesting because you're kind of like getting a family of solutions. Some of these are uh, related in a linear fashion and some are in a hyperbolic fashion. Now, one of the questions that I wanted to bring up is, are there any complex solutions? Uh, for, so, for example, this might be an interesting scenario, like... Is there a particular x or y value that would make the other variable a complex non-real number? Or what happens if you replace x with i? Or x with 1 plus i? Or x or y with 3 plus 4 i? I don't know. Something, right? Please let me know in the comment section because we're going to take a look at the graph real quick and finish up. All right. So here's the graph of our relation. I call it a relation because it's not a function, right? Is it? I don't think it's going to pass the vertical line test. Like, it's going to fail it, like, miserably, right? Think about it. Vertical line test. Okay. But it's a relation. And as you can see here, we do see the line, the diagonal, y equals negative x. And the y equals 1 over x is our hyperbola uh, in the first and the third quadrants. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and don't forget to think about complex solutions. And bye-bye.